There is a reason why this is not only my favorite Ferrari in the world, but my favorite car of all time. Today, we're here at Ferraris Online, where Colleen is going to join us very shortly to explain this particular Ferrari F50. It's one of only eight in the Rosso Barchetta paint color. There's a livery, white wheels, and more to understand about the car that actually eluded me in the past. I came very close to trying to track this one down. Today, we're going to take it out, experience what it's all about and explain why I'm still absolutely mesmerized by the Ferrari F50. It's one of very few models that's rolled out of the gates of Maranello that I think is often misunderstood. A lot of people gravitate to the F50's predecessor, the Ferrari F40. But for me, this has always been the one. When I was a youngster, so tall, I had a poster on my wall of an F50 in yellow. That was the dream, and to this day, it is still the dream. I've been lucky to drive a few of them before, and it lives up to expectations, even when surrounded by the company of some amazing cars, like we see here at Ferraris Online. It's about this, it's about this, and this particular car, like I said, has a bit of a story about how I nearly came close to seeing this one before. Over the years, I've been lucky to experience a few F50s and every single time it has exceeded my expectations. But I want to rewind back to summer 2019, a little over four years ago, when I was here in the United States for a big tour around the country with my Ford GT. Now, one of the highlights that I'd been really looking forward to oddly enough, was to visit Swap Shop in Florida. Now, the reason for that was the late founder of Swap Shop, Preston Hen, was a big enthusiast, had a massive collection of Ferraris and other supercars, and kept them on display at Swap Shop for all to see. Sadly, due to his recent passing though, one I was hoping to find, a yellow F50, was no longer part of the collection. It had been sold onwards. You might therefore be wondering why I referenced that next to this one, would you believe it? It's the same car. And to find out a little bit more, let's go find Colleen and talk all about it before we get it out into the sunshine here in California to go out in this F50. Of course, not only do we have the car that is center stage here, but plenty of others to take a look at here at Ferraris Online. So who better to show us around than Colleen? Hi, welcome to Ferraris Online. And I know you guys want to talk about the F50, but while we're at it, I figured we could do a bit of a showroom tour and talk about the kind of eclectic mix of cars we have here. There are definitely some interesting things around. I feel personally that this is the most interesting because <laughs> yes. to me, the F50 is like, it's like a magnet. I'm just drawn to them wherever I go. But this particular F50, it's not your normal color. Yep. It's not your normal livery. It's not your normal story. <laughs> yeah. And we need to get into all of that. Where do we begin? So as far as the color, uh, most of the F50s were your typical Ferrari red, the Rosa Corsa. But this one is one of the eight Rosa Barchetta cars. So it is a very rare color that is original from the factory in this color. And then of course it has all the fun little decals and everything on it. So to explain that, it's not like we just decided to sticker up the car, but this car was actually bought new by a guy who decided to race it in period. So he bought it and ran it in the Ferrari Challenge series. So it has a huge race history. So we put it back in the livery from when it raced. I just need to think about that. This is the only F50 that raced? Yes. It's the only one. So it was a rare car to begin with in the fact that it's Rosso Barchetta, this darker, straight red paint. It's had some changes since, but how did it remind me? There's a, a great story about how it got here. Ah, yes. Uh, so the first owner raced it for a while and then he decided to sell. So this was before I was working in the business. Uh, this was about 2000 and my dad sold the car to a guy here in the US and it was being imported as a race car. And so race cars are DOT EPA exempt, they're duty free. So customs said, well, you have to prove it's a race car. And my dad said, okay, here's all the race logs, here's photos of it racing, what else do you need? And they said, no, 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 that's not enough proof. What we need is we're gonna take a can of Coca-Cola and we're gonna roll it at the car. And if it fits underneath the front of the car, then it can't be a race car, it's too high off the ground. <laughs> but if the can of Coke doesn't fit, then sure, we'll let you import it as a race car. Why? I don't know. They make stuff up as they go. <laughs> Scientific experiment, <laughs> yeah. rolling a Coke can under the car to prove yeah. it's a race car. So I mentioned that 
when it had been owned by Preston Hen of Swap Shop, mm -hmm. it was yellow. Yes. So it had left the factory in Rosso Bacchetta. Yes. It, at some point in its life, was painted yellow. Mm -hmm. And now it's back to Rosso Bacchetta. But I find this really interesting because there is a myth that when you've painted the carbon body Ferraris, the mm -hmm. F40s, the F50s, that you would no longer see carbon weave on it again. That is not true. Uh, it is very, very difficult to get the carbon weave to come out. And on a car like this, especially because Preston painted it yellow and then we had it repainted to the Rosa Barchetta, you have to do it correctly. You have to strip it in a way that doesn't damage the carbon fiber, but at the same time gets it down to the tub so that you can paint it, prime it and paint it showing the weave, which the shop we sent it to did perfectly. So you really can see the weave in this car. So they can be painted. It's just difficult and quite expensive to do. I was say, it's amazing when you look around it. It's really cool. It's a great story anyway, because mm -hmm. when the F40s had that visible weave, mm -hmm. people thought it was like a defect. It yes. was like, how can you have a car where you can see the material beneath? Mm -hmm. And then if I'm right, later in the run, they started using more paint. Yep. And then with these, people wanted it the other way again. Exactly. So the F40s, it's like the early cars, you could see the weave. The later cars had thicker paint, so you couldn't see the weave. And then the buyers kept changing their mind. You know, they're like, I don't like the weave. I do like the weave. So Ferrari just kind of went with whatever they were doing at the time, whatever people wanted. They made it that way. That's really funny, isn't it? There are plenty more things to come back to with this and the work it's had and talking about the engine and getting it started and going out. But before we do, <laughs> Where do we begin here? You, you have some unusual cars around. Yes, well, if we have to begin somewhere, uh, I would begin with the Comp Daytona because it is my all-time favorite car. Uh, and it's definitely a far cry from your modern supercar and hypercars, but these are just incredible cars and I've always been attracted to race cars that you can drive on the street to the track, race them, and then drive them home. And that's one of the things I love about 60s and 70s race cars is kind of multi-purpose, especially with ones like this, where they are a little more streetable than some other race cars. <laughs> and the, I mean, the Daytona base, but start adding on the fins mm -hmm. and everything else about this is it's not so normal, the, the little scoops here on the side. Yep. <laughs> How many of those were made? So of Comp Daytonas, there were 15 factory cars and then the one prototype car. Uh, and I grew up around the Comp Daytonas. Uh, one of my earliest memories was racing, uh, well, not me racing, I was in the passenger seat while my dad was racing a Comp Daytona around Elkhart Lake. Uh, he actually owned the prototype car and used it as his daily driver for quite a while. <laughs> so, you know, we have a long history with Comp Daytonas. <laughs> that's brilliant. That's absolutely brilliant. And now I guess that's a, that one's a personal kind of, so this one is one of the cars we have for sale. Most of the cars here are for sale, uh, but we keep the personal cars kind of tucked in the back. Okay. Uh, but you know, it's, I'm happy that it's here. I'm not complaining. Fair enough. What else should we, should we pick out? What other highlights are around? Well, as the name suggests, as Ferraris Online, we definitely have a lot of Ferraris here. Uh, we do have some more random stuff. We have the Lamborghini Uraco. We have the Aston Martin. Uh, we even have the Indy Lights race car, so we do get quite the mixture of cars here. It's not uh, that we only deal with Ferraris, but that's definitely my niche and what I specialize in, but I, I'm not stuck on just Ferrari. I love all kinds of cars. All kinds of things. I actually have to say that I'm just going with the color here. Yeah. The Araco looks lovely. Oh yeah. That's really, really, really pretty. Yeah, they actually, so the S cars they made with uh, option of metallic paint. So that wasn't standard on most Uracos, but the S, instead of engine upgrades, they did cosmetic upgrades. So you can get special paint, leather interior, AC, a little more kind of luxury items that make it a bit more comfortable and, and just a little, little better. What year are we talking there? 72. Uh, <laughs> okay, early 70s. Yes. It's such a funny proportioned car, the, the wheelbase just seems slightly wrong, slightly short. Yeah, especially like, for a four-seater. <laughs> yeah, slightly slightly out. And obviously very different to that, which arrived two decades later. Yes. Can we pop open the engine bay? Absolutely. A quick, quick nosy at the, uh, the power plant in here, because you've had this car heavily worked on. Since oh, yes. Taking ownership of it, 
in early 2019, I believe, shortly before I went hunting it to go <laughs> right. and try and find it. Um, and since then, not only a color change, but a whole lot of other work as oh, well. Oh, yeah. God, that's nice in there, isn't it? Oh. That one. Let's see. I need to try and grab this side with my hand. There, there we go. I don't know. Hold that one. <laughs> Got there it. we go. Perfect. Gosh. 4.7 liters of V12. <laughs> yeah. Just over 500 horsepower. Clean, new, fresh, ready to be driven. Oh, yeah. Is it, is it almost heartbreaking to think that the car's heading onwards? It is. It really is, especially because we've had it for a few years now. And I love it. I mean, the, the whole story behind it, the fact that we sold it for, uh, for the first owner to Preston Hen and then bought it back from them. And now it's about to find a new home again. So we definitely have quite the history with this specific car, but it was really great seeing it come back to life because uh, when we got it from Preston, it was yellow and uh, he had driven it, you know? And so it wasn't, in this kind of condition. Uh, and so every little nut and bolt was gone through and it's, it's just so clean and perfect now. And I love seeing it like this, but I am excited for the next owner to drive it and use it and enjoy it. Cause I personally believe these cars need to be used. It's also amazing to see how much space there is in here. <laughs> yeah. I mean, when you're working with 60s, 70s, older cars, mm -hmm. that that's kind of a given. Modern car packaging is not like this. Mm -hmm. This was, let's take an early 90s F1 lump, make it a little bit bigger and stick it into the back of a massive carbon fiber bodied monster. Oh yeah. And this is what they resulted with. But it's, it's actually quite simple, dare mm -hmm. I say it. Just the, the, the setup, the, the construction, everything that you look in here, it's just cloaked in this bodywork, which was, I know the development of the Mythos concept yeah. that they had shown based on the Testarossa. And here it is. The F50 in a very unusual paint color with the white wheels, with the livery. Yeah. But I think you also have normal wheels and... Yes. Yes, we have the normal wheels, the, the factory correct wheels for it, uh, and the decals all come off. It was just, we had to do it in how it raced because it's just fun, you know, and it's part of the history of the car. And I love these cars because they have history to them. They're, they're a vehicle, yes, but they tell a story. And so I, I love showing the story of the car. What I think we need to do though, is to start it and take it out. Absolutely. Go for a short little run. Yes, definitely. Pop this down carefully. Never the easiest thing. Actually, easier to pop down. Oh yeah. Yeah, one person putting it up a little difficult, but down, not as bad. Yeah, and then it just clicks. Yep. Perfect, done. Easy peasy. Interior <laughs> with harnesses. Have to. Ready to race. <laughs> so what track are we heading to? Laguna Seca, Sonoma? We'll drive it up to Laguna Seca, <laughs> run it, drive it back. <laughs> Sounds good, let's pull it on out and um, yeah, go experience. Awesome, so obviously you have to go for a drive in it. And I love the racing harness on it. When you actually twist it all the way, the whole thing comes off. Uh, you can put the normal seat belts uh, back in, but had to do the racing harness yeah. with, uh, with well, hey, the race car. Livery I'm not and complaining. Everything. V12 startup inbound. All right. So cool. So cool. I'm not going to try and open the door here. Yeah. I might let you pull it out first okay. and then give it a go. <laughs> in the car now to work out the belts okay where are we this needs to go that way this is where we montage it and make it take like Actually five seconds works too. i am just about getting there with the belts <laughs> just about okay we're in they're a pain in the butt <laughs> but they work isn't it funny when you jump into I guess you don't spend so much time in the modern equivalents. Yeah. But when you get into something a little bit older like this, you feel so open. To like me, the... this feels so modern. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't it funny? It's all kind of what, what you're used to, what yeah. you're used to being around. No, it's funny because like a lot of people, you know, are like, yeah, it's a classic. And I'm like, yeah, to me, this is like 
I mean, yeah. this is 90s. This is 30 years old. This yeah. is like... Oh, it's so cool. It's already so cool. <laughs> been in the car for less than 100 yards and I'm like, yes! Oh, I love it. It's funny because the sound of it, you know, chain driven. And how I... I won't hear a word that you say. <laughs> but I'm totally okay with it. It's like, we can't, we can't talk. Right? Obviously, we're running completely open, but you have the hard top, the soft top. Yeah. Because the cars came, I mean, a lot of people get confused and think that it has one or the other. Right. But there's the fixed, the hard roof is a kind of mm -hmm. fixed contraption that you take off, leave at home. Yeah. And then there's a soft roof you can stir away. Although, can it fit in with the roll bar for the harnesses? That um, must replace the soft roof. Yeah, that replaces that. We have it, but uh, the, the roll will have to be removed. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. uh, I've always loved the sound of these cars because how they're bolted onto the back firewall right there yep. and chain driven and everything. They are very kind of raw and visceral and rattly and, and it, it's yeah. it's quite a noise to it. It's an intoxicating noise, but it's it's loud and I love it. <laughs> it's funny how much it changes because at idle right now, it's not crazy. Right. At but idle, as it's as pretty... You get on it, it's For me, this has always been, it's always been F50 because the first poster I ever put on a wall when I was like you know, nine, 10 years old was a, was a yellow F50. Oh, okay. It was a, it was a poster of a yellow 50. I never liked, <laughs> I never liked the idea of a red Ferrari. Yeah. Which is quite ironic because I've just bought my first red Ferrari a couple of weeks ago. Oh really, what did you get? <laughs> 296 GTS. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But it's, it, took, it took until number six before I went for a red one. Right. And I've not yet had a yellow one. Yellow has to be saved for something, something, something really special. Yeah. And it's often it's often those childhood memories and things though that that give you inspiration and drive and whatnot. And I know obviously you've grown up around Ferraris and for you yeah. and around motorsport and racing and all of this. And I think that's what now makes it even more exciting, right? Because yeah. it's it's what links back to where it began and mm -hmm. and what kind of. That's probably why I am so obsessed with the Comp Daytona is it's the first car I remember going around the track with my dad in. And me and him had raced uh, go-karts and legend cards, like all kinds of stuff. But going out with my dad on the track in that car was just special. Yeah. And it always stuck with me. Like for me right now, summer, this weather, open car, driving, <laughs> yeah. this is like, tick all the boxes you want. All the boxes that make an epic time. difference it makes in here. If you wind the windows up, does it get much less windy? Uh, I hope so, because uh, no this, this car with my hair is literally like the worst. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> hey, it, worth it. I can't complain. And then you have all the random things like the shape of the, mm -hmm. the rear view mirror. It's one of the most odd design decisions ever. It is. But for those that don't know, this, this shape is to do with being able to see through the buttresses behind. Yeah. It's...
This is the spot for the swap. Yeah, exactly. This is exciting right now. <laughs> Very exciting. How can I not be when right. it's one of these? Right. Oh yes, I've, I've done the thing where it comes up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Click. Okay, that can stay here. <laughs> All right, swing in. There's not the most space in the world inside here. No. They, uh... Oh, what? I did, uh... I left the two top ones buckled, so you might oh, okay. have to, like... Over the head. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Off we go. It's always amazing to me when you get in something that, as you said, it's, you know, it's older, but it's not crazy old. Yeah. But it's so much rawer than any new car. Yeah. You know, the feeling that you have with the car. Well, it's so raw. I mean, it's... New cars are amazing technology, but the, the driver experience in something like this, it doesn't do anything for you. You have to drive it, you know? this car you <laughs> cannot help by just but like just ah yeah <laughs> lucky to go on an F50 in my life. Yeah. I said this earlier, it never disappoints. I know. Ever. <laughs> this for me is the definitive supercar experience, drive. What's your favorite car you've driven? The F50s? Yeah. F50s. For me it's a short list. Maybe it's partially driven by the emotional connection to different cars, but yeah. F50, Carrera GT is up there. Yeah. Both cars that have motorsport derived engines. Yeah. It's it's big engines, but raw driving experiences. when you drive like your dream icon cars you, you get behind the wheel of them and you just kind of question why you yes. thought that was so amazing because because it just doesn't live up to expectations right yeah it happens it's, it's the reality sometimes you get into the cars though and no regrets in the world it just feels so neat and easy and clean and tidy and slotted from one gear to the next. Yeah. It just goes. And... One other thing that I love about older cars, when you get that, like the difference between each one, because yep. they're all restored or taken care of a little different. And I love that. I love how they're not, they have personalities, they're not the same. Yep. It's really loud in here, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. It is surprisingly easy to maneuver. It is. The, the clutch is not particularly difficult and painful. It's not too heavy, and it has decent visibility. Yeah. I mean, I the mirrors really show you everything around you. I was about to say, and if they don't, you just kind of pop your head up. Yeah. <laughs> and then you're good. Tidy. <laughs> wow, thank you so much for this. Of course. Lift back down. Nice and easy. You know, modern cars, you've got all these complicated buttons right. and switches, and it's like just up, down. Yeah, that you would know, do. One little switch. That's all you need. That's all you need. I think sometimes the modern cars overcomplicate stuff. Yeah. Which it's great, it's fun, you know, but sometimes when you're searching for like, okay, or even like the 355, like the top, the older cars overcomplicate.
complicated too, so I guess kind of hit or miss. <laughs> Amazing. Thank you so much for that. Yeah, of course. Super cool. We're back inside. I'm just going to pull the lever down here though. We pop open the front. It's super cool to see all of this. All the exposed carbon. Not a whole lot else though, really. Yeah. No, the, the front of these cars is pretty bare bones. There's space for some tools, some little odds <laughs> and ends, but that's about it. It's funny actually to think that's where the tool bag is. <laughs> yeah. Like down by the front wheel. I'm gonna just come around to that side. But it's really a car that was so much closer to 90s motorsport than the modern cars are mm -hmm. to motorsport now. Right. I mean, these are just panels that are needed for registration, homologation. Yeah. Making it something you can drive. The that engines derive from the 333 SP and um, old F1 cars. I yeah. mean, that's how they started it. And then they decided, let's make a street version of it. And I'm so very pleased they did. <laughs> right, and thank no you kidding. for letting me drive one of 349 of these in the entire world. My pleasure. A very, very special car and a very cool experience. Even though I've spent quite a bit of time around F50s before, whether that's been driving or just seeing them in collections and things, it's fun to still spot new things. For example, this piece just here, which is of course a wind deflector mounted to the back part of the A-pillar around the sides of the windows. But Having been lucky to drive many very special cars, including multiple F50s, there's something about these that keeps bringing me back to them. It's the combination of the V12 engine, the open driving experience, the gated manual shifter, these three things that very few cars really offer. It's a package that, like we just said, you find very similarly in the Porsche Carrera GT, but in terms of slightly less old cars, more modern or at least from my lifetime. And we all like cars that link to our own lifetimes. That's a big part of it. For example, the wave of 60s, 70s cars being worth absolute fortunes is a generational thing. And 80s, 90s cars are going to become worth even more fortunes going forwards. And this is an interesting topic because people will say, why don't I just buy one then? There's the small matter of this being worth about the same as my whole car collection put together, maybe two thirds of my whole car collection put together in one single car. And let's be realistic, you can't buy a car like this and go and drive it every day and do 50,000 miles a year in it on multiple road trips and things because it's not that kind of car and it wouldn't be so special if you did. It's the infrequent experience and drive of something like an F50 that makes it so truly, I, I don't know what the word is, but makes it emotional, makes it an emotional experience. And I've had some days at the wheel of these before where I've literally felt like I'm tearing up because of how significant it's been to me. The idea of a yellow in particular F50, but such a special F50. And for somebody who loves colors and bespoke features about cars, a one of eight Rosso Barchetta car, which you can find out more about on exclusive car registry as well, is something that's just so far beyond even the standard, if I can call it standard. You know, an F50 is rare to begin with, one of 349 cars. That's not a whole lot when it comes to these kinds of things. And yes, it was a tough sell back at the time because the F40 was revered. This on paper wasn't even really any quicker in reality, I think in test drives, but the V12, 12 cylinder engine, it's a mega thing. And to be reunited, if I can say, with this car reunited, I saw it at Quail a couple of months ago, but to finally meet this car that I had tried to meet a few years back in its totally new guise and to have now driven it as well out on the road with Colleen. This is just, it's the coolest thing. It is the coolest, coolest thing to have been around. So wow, what a day. A big thanks to Ferraris Online, a big thanks to Colleen for the opportunity to go out in this F50. And as always, a big thanks to you guys for your support. It's gonna be for sale soon. It's gonna be heading to a new home. Somebody is gonna enjoy this car an awful lot. That's it for now though. Thanks again, and I'll see you soon. Cheers.